So we're finally getting into some real math. Okay? We've got one last step to do, um, and we'll handle that today. And then next week, I'm just going to basically give you an equation, and I'm going to say solve it. Okay? Or I'm going to say factor it. Or I'm going to say, uh, actually, those will be the two. I'm not going to say just straight up divide it because I'm not going to be that nice. Okay? I'm just going to say go. And you're going to go, and we're going to run with it. Real max. Okay? Okay. So we need to use today something called the rational zero theorem. Okay. Now, the rational zero theorem says that if you have a polynomial function, okay, that's what this f of x equals a to a sub n times x to the n power, all that fun stuff means. Okay. It's just a rational function. So it could be like f of x equals 7x cubed plus 14x squared minus 3x plus 6. Okay. That's a rational function. Okay. What the rational zero theorem is saying is then every rational zero, so, so far I've given you a zero or I've given you a factor. What this is saying is that every rational zero of f is of the form p divided by q. A rational number is a fraction. Okay. So we find that fraction by taking any factor of the constant term, that one, okay, and dividing it by any factor of the lead coefficient. And that's going to give us a list that we can work off of. Because if I just said solve that equation and it wasn't factorable by any of the means that you know how to factor by, okay, you would have an infinite amount of zeros that you would be able to try. Okay? The rational zero theorem takes that infinite amount of zeros and narrows it down. Now, it might narrow it down to 16 or 18, okay? But that's still, 16 or 18 numbers is better than an infinite amount of numbers, okay? And then from there, we can whittle it down even further, and that's what we're going to get to on Monday, okay? So, if this is my function, and it really doesn't matter, the only two things that matter in any function to find the rational zero are the very first term, or the very first number, and the very last number. Yeah. Oops, I put those in the, I put my colors in the wrong spots. Sorry about that, Aiden. I'm sorry that I failed you once again. Okay. It's all about color code. Okay. So what I do, and again, I'm a little crazy. Okay. What I do is I first list the factors of 15. So what numbers evenly divide into 15? First one straight. First one straight. Oh, one. One. Yep, one's a, one's a, one's a 
divides into everything. Then three. Then three. Oops, hold on. One, then three. Okay. Five. And fifteen. Any other ones? Virtual land, any other ones? We're missing four. There's four more out there. Can't they be positive and negative? Bingo! Nice job, Dave. Okay. So we've got positives and negatives all the way through. Yep. Okay. So we got plus or minuses all the way through there. Okay. Then what I do is I say, well, what are my factors of two? What? Plus or minus one and plus or minus two. So now, my list, this is just creating the list. So my list of possible zeros, I would take all of the red numbers and I would divide them by this first one. That's the easy one because it's just all of the red numbers again. So it would be plus or minus one, plus or minus three, plus or minus five, and plus or minus 15. Okay. Then I take all of the red numbers and I rinse, lather, and repeat with however many factors I have in green. In this case, it's just one more, so it's two. So it would be plus or minus one half, plus or minus three halves, plus or minus five halves, plus or minus 15 halves. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my list of all the possible rational zeros for that function. Now, where we're going to get to on Monday is we're going to get, we're going to whittle that list down to just the two that work. Okay, because I got to find two in that one because the degree of my function is 2. Okay? So, knowing what you know now, please find me the rational zeros of the list of all the possible rational zeros of this function. So my factors of eight. I have plus or minus one, two, four, and eight of two. One and two. So my list. My possible rational zeros are, or is, one, all these are all plus and minuses, two, four, eight, one half, two divided by two is one, I already have it, four divided by two is two, I already have it, eight divided by two is four, I already have it. If we already have them, we don't need to repeat them because it's just literally a list of them. Okay? So it's 
not in any particular order. Okay. Good. Love it. Okay. So, oops, I guess we are starting this today. That's even awesomer. I lied before. Sorry, it happens. Okay. We're going to do a couple of them today. Okay. So, Love this stuff. Real mass. Okay. We're going to find all the rational zeros of that function. Okay. We're going to solve it. And that's all we're given. We're just given the function. Okay. So, step number one is we're going to find all the potential zeros that we can. Okay. Or that we have. So that's what we were just doing. So we're gonna find um, we're gonna find the factors of 18. So that's one, two, three, six, nine, and eighteen. Right? Factors of one, that's just one. So my list is just my red list. Okay. Now, that just happened to work out. In this case, if we had a coefficient, that wouldn't necessarily be the case. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to try and find a zero. Okay. So, actually, let me scroll back up here. Come on, mouse, where are you? There you are, I found you. Remember what it is when we get here to finding a zero. And we just need to find one. Okay? Now, we've got a couple of different ways to do this. Okay? So first off, oops, I should go back up to my list. There's my list. So we can try any of those numbers. Synthetically. Okay. So if I try one, for instance, okay. so I'm going to try one synthetic into one, two, negative nine, negative eighteen. Okay. And if I get a zero down here, I found one. Okay. Here we go. One. One, three, three, negative six, negative six, negative twenty-four. Not a zero, right? Because it didn't end up with zero. Okay? So one is off of our list, and my numbers kind of didn't get very big here. Okay? So let's try two. One, two, negative nine, negative eighteen. One, two, four, eight. Uh, what's that? Negative one, negative two, negative twenty. Okay, that one didn't work. So let's try negative two. One, two, 
one, two, nine, fifteen. One negative two zero zero negative nine eight. Hey, guess what? We found one. Right? Found one? Okay. So if I'm thinking of this now, negative two is a zero. And I'm going to put a big old circle around it on my paper because that's one of my answers. How many answers do I have to get in this particular one? Three of them, right? Okay. So we found one. Love it. Okay. So that's going to give me a new polynomial. So f of x is now going to be, oops, let me scroll back up. So if negative 2 is a 0, then x equals negative 2, then x plus 2 equals 0. So x plus 2 is my factor. Kind of working backwards to from our bus stop. Okay. So that would mean then that f of x would now be x plus 2 times this thing. Well, 3 was my, my original degree. I dropped that down by 1. So then that would be x squared plus 0x minus 9. Is x squared minus 9 factorable? Yay or nay on x squared minus 9 being factorable? What do you got? I don't Because it's a perfect square minus a perfect square? Yep. So f of x here is going to be x plus 2 times x minus 3 times x plus 3. What if it's not factorable? Then we would, yep, so in the next step, we'd have to go quadratic formula then. Okay? Because in our last step, step number four, now what we're going to do is we're going to solve that. Okay? So we would have x plus 2 equals 0. That gives me x equals negative 2. That's the one that we found first. x minus 3 equals 0 gives me x equals 3. x plus 3 equals 0 gives me x equals negative 3. So in the end, I've got my three solutions. Oops, wrong color. In the end, I have my three solutions, negative 2 and plus or minus 3. Okay. How about finding 1? Monday, I'll give you a shortcut to finding 1 or 2 or 3. Okay. But I don't want to give you that shortcut just yet. I want you to go through the steps here. Huh? So I'm going to give you this one here now. So basically, first off, I want you to list the possible rational factors. Okay? That was the first half of class today. And then I want you to actually find me. I shouldn't say factors here. I should say 
zero solution. Step one is finding my list. Okay. Because my leading coefficient is one, the, the list is just the factors of my constant term. So in this case, it'd be one, two, three, six, nine, and 18. Step two, you got to try and find one. Anybody find one? One? Yeah. Sometimes we get lucky, and the first one you try is the first one that it works. Okay. One, negative four, negative 15, and 18. One, one. Negative three, negative three, negative eighteen, negative eighteen, zero. Okay, so one is zero. Okay. Step three. Now it's not the only one. So if you got a different one, that's fine. Your numbers are going to change a little bit here. But in the end, we'll all be the same. We'll still be at the same spot. Okay. So this now would be f of x equals x. So if 1 is a 0, then that means that x equals 1. So then that would be x minus 1 equals 0. So x minus 1 is the factor. So then x minus 1 here, and I'm left with x squared minus 3x minus 18. x squared minus 3x minus 18, that factors to be x minus 6 and x plus 3. Here now we would be merging again, okay? because now we should be back, everybody should be at the same page. Then step four, whoa, not quite sure what happened there. Got a little jumpy there. So then we would say x minus 1 equals 0. So that gives us x equals 1, that one that we found. x minus 6 equals 0. That gives me x equals 6. x plus 3 equals 0. x equals negative 3. So my three zeros then would be my final answer, if you will, would be negative 3, 1, and 6. And if we go way back up here, the list, whoa, hey now, that's just crazy. Let me get through it. Not it's jumping on me. The list was also an eight. Okay? Can't get them all in there. Cool. Questions, comments, concerns, clarifications, haikus. 
if I knew another limerick type thing, I'd say that too. No way you drop something off the front. With that being said, that's all I've got for you uh, today. But I can leave you with this. Get your work turned in. Okay? I want to grade stuff. Okay? Get your work turned in. Okay? There's lots of missing things. But you now have the ability to do this week's worksheet. Okay. Today's formative, I have, it's going to open at 2 o'clock. So it won't open for anybody until 2 p.m. this afternoon. But it will open at 2. And in the meantime, you've got plenty of stuff that you can be doing. Okay. Onliners, that's all I got for you. Get your stuff turned in. Okay. Have yourselves a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday.